Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will continue with the SQL series. In the previous video, we covered the fundamentals of SQL and we wrote few basic SQL queries to answer few business questions. I left you with few practice questions to practice on your own. Let's quickly go ahead and cover the practice question and build on from the previous session. The first question was, provide data for all customers whose commute distance is zero to one miles. To retrieve data for these customers whose commute distance is zero to one, we can filter on the commute distance column and set the filter condition to zero to one miles in single quotes. Once we run our query, it further reduces the number of rows in our query's output. So these are all the customer with a commute distance of zero to one mile. And the second question was, provide data for all customers who own less than one car and with a commute distance of zero to one miles. This question builds on from the previous one. Here we can filter on number of cars owned column. This will limit our queries results to customer who do not own cars. I hope you see where I'm going with this. If you're a bike company and you want to target customers who do not own cars and have a short commute distance, maybe the company can run a targeted promotion campaign to sell more bikes to these customers. After applying these filters, our queries row count is down to 1980, meaning we only have 1980 customers that meet this filter criteria. Remember this number as it will help us when we cover joins. The last question was, how many distinct or unique customers does AdventureWorks have? This is relatively simple. We can select the customer key column and this will give us a number of unique customers. We can use an aggregate function that'll give us the total number of unique customers. To get the total number of customers, we can use the count function. We can say count open parentheses and in the parentheses, we can supply a column, for example, customer key, or we can use an asterisk and close the parentheses. And on our query, this gives us 18,484. We can double check this number by using the customer key column and calling the distinct clause on it. Distinct clause returns only the distinct or the unique values. This returns the same value because this is a proper dimension table with a primary key, which is the customer key column. This means the customer key column uniquely identifies each row in this table. There are no duplicate customer keys in this table. So now we know that we have 18,484 customers. Okay, let's get back to regular scheduled programming. We will enhance our query to fulfill the new incoming requests from the client. Our client relation manager is back with an enhancement request. He wants us to add complete customer address to this data set. And this address should include customer street address, including apartment number, if any. And he also wants the customer's city, state, postal code, and the country. This additional request makes the query challenging. However, we can break this problem into steps and work toward resolving each step. First request is for the customer's street address. We have two columns in our customer table. We have address line one and we have address line two we can concatenate the address line one with the two column with the plus symbol. First column includes the street address and the second column contains the apartment number if a customer has an apartment. So we can include these two columns. Address line two column has nulls. So we will apply the coalesce function, if you recall it from the first session, and apply that function on this column. And let's add the word APT for apartment between address line one and two. Since address line two column is sparsely populated, we will add the APT word whenever there's value in address line two. Otherwise, we will simply display the column. This can be achieved with if else logic in SQL. We will write our first conditional logic with a case statement. The case statement goes through the conditions and returns a value when the first condition is met, like an if else statement. So once a condition is true, it will stop reading and return the result. If no condition is true, it returns the value in the else clause. And if there is no else clause and no condition is true, then it returns nulls. So we'll add the address line one and add a plus symbol to concatenate the second column. 
and here we will write the keyword case followed by when and in the when clause we check for the condition. We will supply the column address line 2 and check if this is null. And in the then clause we return the address line 2 column. In the else clause that means when the column is not null we add the word apt in quotes and concatenate it with address line 2 column. We complete this statement with end keyword and give this column a name of address. This is our complete customer address. For our second task, we need to find out where the customer geographic location attributes are saved. If you recall it from the first session, they are in the dim geography table. Let's expand the dim geography and preview the columns in this table. We have city, state, and country columns. To bring these columns in our query, we will explore the SQL joins. A join clause is used to combine rows from two or more tables based on a related column between them. There are different kind of joins, but uh, we will focus on the inner join for now. Inner join returns the record that have matching values in both tables. Let's cover this with an example. Let's say we have a customer table with five records and a transaction table with customer transactions. Only three customer transactions are there in the transaction table. Last two customer, Pam and Stanley, haven't made a purchase yet. Once we join these two tables on customer ID, we only get three matching rows back. So the inner join returns only the matching rows from both tables. So back in SSMS, we use the inner join keyword after the customer table and bring in the dim geography table. After the table, we write the on clause. Here we specify the column or columns that are common between them. So using these column, we can join these two tables. To make things easier for us, we can alias the table with a single letter, so we don't have to write the table name each time we reference it in our code. I will alias the dim customer as C and geography table as G. The common column or the key as it is usually referred to is the geography key column. So we write C, which is customer dot geography key, equals g, which is geography table, g dot geography key. Now we can bring in the column from geography table in our query. We can reference the geography as g, and let's bring in the columns after the address column. So it'll be g dot city, g dot state province name, g dot postal code, and last one is g dot English country region name. Let's go ahead and rename the last column using the as keyword and we'll name it as country. Okay, let's run our query to confirm it if it's working correctly. We see the columns from the geography table. This is good. And our row count is still 1980, which is another good indication. Sometimes when you join on a key that is not a good joint candidate, your query's row count will be significantly higher than before the join. This is an indicator that the key we joined on has duplicates in it. So the one side of the relationship is invalid. We need to find the correct column to join on to fix this sort of issue. Here, everything looks good. So we can package the data and send it to our end user. We get a follow up from the client and he wants us to add customer age to this data set. We know that we have the date first purchase in customer table. We can use this column along with the current date, which we can obtain from getDate function. This is a built-in function in SQL Server, and there are a lot more built-in functions in SQL Server. If you're curious, then I'll leave a link that covers some of these functions. Let's add these two columns in our query and execute it to see what we get back. We have the first order date of the customer, and we have a current date column. Using these two columns, we can calculate the age. For this, we'll use another built-in function called date diff. This gives us the difference between the two dates. We want to get customer age at year and month level. Let's calculate the year first. So for the year, we call the date diff function. The first argument is month. Then we supply a date of first purchase, comma, followed by the get date function and we divide this by 12 to get the year. Similarly, we differentiate between date of first purchase and current date 
And this time around, we will use the modulus operator and it is represented by the percent sign. The modulus operator returns the remainder of a number divided by another number. Let's concatenate these two together and add in a string year after the year calculation and month after the month calculation to make the distinction between the two. And this will give us the customer age. Let's execute the query to confirm our calculation. Our query throws an error that it cannot convert the word year into integer since the end result of our calculation is an integer. Plus, we can only concatenate strings in SQL. So let's go ahead and convert both of these calculations to string with cast function. We can use the SQL cast function to convert the data type of a column. We will set these two to var car, that means variable character. Since these two will only be two characters long, we supply the number two. Now we are going to go ahead and concatenate these two and our query should run fine. Okay, our age calculation looks good and we have fulfilled the requirements. We can comment out the unnecessary column from the result set, for example, the house owner flag and the number of cars owned. These columns are used for filtering we can add the comments in SQL query with two dashes. SQL engine ignores anything that follows the dashes. And it's always a good idea to write comments in your code or whenever you perform any complex business uh, logic. Because if you were to come back to the SQL script after a few months, this will help you remember why you built that logic or what this logic does. So a comment will help you understand and remember why you coded something. Anyways, our data set is ready. We can send it to our end user. And I think this is a good stopping point. I'll conclude this session here. We will carry on from here in the next. Until then, like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.